In the news tonight, authorities don't expect any variants to emerge. ADB believes Fiji's recovery is dependent on vaccination and house fire leaves 10 homeless. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nan. Ulovinaka, Fiji. The health ministry says it's mindful of the need for booster shots if the Delta strain of COVID-19 were to mutate. The variant has been identified as highly transmissible. However, tests overseas have confirmed the AstraZeneca vaccine is highly effective against Delta. As of now, local authorities don't expect any variants to emerge. Scientists around the world are on the lookout for any changes in the Delta strain which has gripped Viti Levu for close to four months. When and if that happens, definitely we'd need to look into booster doses. Um, but uh, like uh, I think I've mentioned this before, but science will eventually tell us when would that booster dose come into play as well. The variant is now in 65 other countries, including the UK and the US, as well as Africa and Asia, crippling health services in a new wave of the pandemic. Fiji's high vaccination rate is seen as a buffer against any possible variant emerging locally. The longer the virus lingers in the community, then the likelihood that it will develop a new variant. And that's why we have the variants that we have at the moment, the Delta, the Alpha, the Lambda variant, is because they've lingered in communities for a long period of time. Close to 90% of the population has received the first dose and just over 30% are fully vaccinated. Discussions are underway with development partners to bring genome sequencing capacity into Fiji. The health ministry says this will help test for possible new variants locally. Christiana Uluwai reports that new variants are likely to form in countries where there is a wider community transmission. I will introduce you to... Uh, the World Health Organization says that new variants can destabilize the efficacy of the COVID vaccines. Uh, there's a number of characteristics of it that cause some concern because, of course, any changes in the virus pose some threat to its ability uh, for the vaccines to work. The Minister for Health confirms that Fiji is still dealing with a Delta variant. We don't have a new variant. Uh, and we encourage everyone to be fully vaccinated. We are seeing variants come uh, from places in which the virus lingers in the community for a long period of time. We have the capacity to be able to shut that uh, by ensuring that we vaccinate as many of our population as we can. The permanent secretary, Dr. James Pong, says they have been sending their specimen to the Doty lab in Melbourne to keep track of the variants. Christiana Uluwai, FBC News. The head of economics and programming at the Asian Development Bank believes tourism is the key to Fiji's recovery post-COVID-19. Eric Elbers says Fiji being able to vaccinate, vaccinate rather, its target population will be a confidence boost to potential tourists which will lead to economic recovery. Kritika Kumar reports. The ADB economist says there cannot be a full economic recovery without the resumption of tourism even in short run. And when we reach those high uh, numbers of vaccines in the community, that will allow the gradual easing of restrictions which in turn will allow the economy to start recovering. He adds tourism industry needs to be supported to ensure they are ready to receive visitors when travel resumes. And it's for that reason that I think it's very important that we also make sure we support the tourism industry. And indeed, the Asian Development Bank, we have provided assistance to Fiji Airways, and we are also working together with Fiji airports. The tourism industry recognized early that vaccination is the only way out of the current crisis, Therefore, the association is encouraged to see that vaccination is the key focus of the 2021-2022 national budget. We're following on from a contraction of about 15.7% last year and what we think is probably a conservative estimate for a 4.1% contraction projected for this year. Um, we don't have a lot in the kitty to draw for. The association says that tourism needs clear and specific recovery strategies to survive so that its multiplier effects on the economy can resume via foreign exchange earnings and employment. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. A shortage of ambulances to transport COVID and non-COVID patients has been a challenge for St. John's Fiji since the pandemic started. However, the NGO has been furnished with four new ambulances 
along with assorted protective equipment and consumables to accommodate the ever-increasing demand from Fijians who are in dire need of various emergency services. Josiana Nunga reports. The joy on their faces says it all as their prayers have been answered after St. John New Zealand stepped forward to provide this assistance given the magnitude of our current situation. And these four ambulances will add to the national capability in this battle to save lives in this pandemic. New Zealand High Commissioner to Fiji, Jonathan Kerr, says close to $500,000 was spent to mobilize and safely transport this equipment. We've responded to requests ranging from medical consumables to equipment and to personnel. And this has included support totaling over $1 million for first response teams. These are the equipment and necessities that St. John Fiji is in dire need of to boost its COVID-19 response efforts. Us, this has really value added. Um, we were in dire need of having uh, extra ambulances, especially during this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. It's finally here. These four Land Cruiser ambulances are going to be a huge injection to the current St. John Fiji fleet and will be used for the foreseeable future. Meanwhile, St. John New Zealand stands ready to render more assistance where applicable as Fiji continues to grapple with the impact of the pandemic. Chosa Yenanunga, FBC News. Ten people have been left homeless after a fire destroyed a three-flat house at Pandit Maharaj Street in Vesi Vesi Kinoya, Nasino. National Fire Authority Chief Executive Pua Mao Sowani says the corrugated iron and timber house was engulfed when firefighters arrived at the scene just after 11 a.m. Sowani says the fire team managed to stop it from spreading to nearby houses. He's urging the public and property owners to take fire safety seriously after a spike in the number of incidents this month. According to the NFA, statistics from January to date show that a total of 67 structural fires were recorded compared to over 70 for the same period last year. The NFA will be carrying out investigations into the incident to ascertain the cause of the fire. To our latest COVID-19 update for today, Fiji recorded 657 new infections for the period ending 8 a.m. yesterday. 256 cases were from the west and 401 from the central division. The health ministry also recorded three new COVID-19 deaths between August 6th and 7th. All three were in the central division. Fiji has recorded 36,909 cases since April this year. There are now 24,138 active cases in isolation with 12,384 recoveries in total. The COVID-19 death toll stands at 299. The vaccination campaign also continues around the country. As of yesterday, 510,895 people or 87.1% of the population have received their first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. 180,020 people or 30.7% have received their second dose. The five most vaccinated areas are Mba, Rewa and Nanonga, which have now crossed the 100% mark for the first jab. Next, Anandi and Naita City. Rewa also tops the list of provinces with the most number of second jabs administered. And Abdul Zorab from Lovu in Lotoka getting his second COVID-19 jab, being fully vaccinated. Have you vaccinated? Up ahead, Sodelpa General Secretary refutes claims by Mbulitavu and Dalomo villages showing resilience. Welcome back. New developments in the Social Democratic Liberal Party scandal with MP Mosesi Mbulitavu questioning party expenses. Mbulitavu, who is wanted out by Sodelpa executives, claims Party General Secretary Lenaitasi Nduru is being overpaid with a $40,000 salary and weekly allowances of $400. Apenisa Wangairandovu reports Nduru sees these claims as attempts to muddy the waters and says he will not bend to accusations. 
The Sadelpa General Secretary has refuted Bulitabu's claim, saying the MP is being irrational towards how the party is being run. I don't know where he's getting his figures from. I, I think I know his sources, but uh, they are not, uh, I can uh, say that they are not correct. He says Bulitabu's attempts to out him will not be successful. I'm not going to resign just because uh, you know, someone like Bulitabu calls for my resignation. Eh? Uh, Bulitabu is not my employer. My employer is the management board. Bulitabu also reveals what he claims are the core issues within Sodelpa. The biggest problem in Sodelpa is governance and also transparency and also the, um, you know, the token dagger culture within Sodelpa. He further claims that personal and political agenda drives Sodelpa, one which led to many issues, including attempts to vacate his seat in parliament. For my case, is an example, a good example, you know, where, where personal and political agenda within the party you know, drives this party. Uh, you know, it doesn't think about national issues. It's not for the people. And I think a party that is not for the people Having this kind of attitude and culture is just irrelevant uh, in modern politics. The party general secretary has also refuted claims of over expenses in hiring new staff. However, he says the party has hired people to assist their campaign director for the next general election. Apinisol Gerdovu, FBC News. All taxi operators are being urged to comply with their respective PSV permit conditions as all existing laws still apply. This has been clarified by Minister for Transport, Fayaz Koya, while outlining the incentives in the new budget. Lina Rees reports that Koya also cleared the air on a key amendment to the land transport budget, uh, excuse me, uh, also highlighted uh, amendments to the Land Transport uh, Act, which is the establishment of the open taxi rank system. The open rank system is targeted to ensure service efficiency and reliability whilst giving operators and drivers a greater opportunity. Open taxi ranks actually enable uh, taxis to operate from any rank within their designated areas of operation on a first in first out basis or rotational basis as we call it. To date we have about 7,000 odd taxis all over Fiji who will benefit from this concept. In fact, the framework gives opportunity for all taxi operators to operate in unity whilst reducing illegal operations. The Fiji Taxi Association also expressed their views of the open rank system with its announcement to be made within the next two months. It's going to be benefit some drivers, not all, depend on the basis where they're going to have the trading base to be given. Not all the uh, taxi drivers are going to be benefit, but some of them, they're going to get benefit out of that. The system will also provide for the removal of monthly fees associated with bases and stands as this will be replaced with an annual PSV levy. Lena Reese, FBC News. The drive through vaccination in Lombasa has gotten off to a slow start with only a few people jabbed since it opened last Friday. The drive through vaccination site has been set up to vaccinate as many Fijians in Madhuata as possible. Rahul Deo of Rahul Investment received his first dose at the drive through Jitendra Sami of Siberia Lambas says the drive through is an excellent initiative that will help those who have a busy schedule. Sami brought his wife to get her first dose of the vaccine. He says the process is simple and convenient. To date, 82.9% of eligible population in Madhuata, or 37,803 Fijians, have received the first dose, while 4,249, or 9.3%, are fully vaccinated. While some communities are struggling to recover from TC Yasa, waiting for government support, others like the villages of Mbua, Dalomo and Tiliva are forging ahead. Through the Solo, Sole Solevaki concept, the villages work together to build a footbridge damaged by the cyclone using whatever resources they have. Eleanor Turangai View has more. They are an epitome of resilience, a community working together for a common goal rebuilding their lives following the aftermath of Tixi Yasa. We are not waiting for government assistance. We have the leadership and the support of the Twimbua and we done this for ourselves. Leveraging on support from families in Vitilevo and overseas as well as several sawmillers, the villagers took it upon themselves to build the footbridge that would easily connect them to many services. The shop 
bus depot, school, and other farms are on the side of the river. If there is no punt or boat to bring us across, we would swim. The original bridge was damaged in 2016, and since then villages have been building makeshift bridges like this. This is the fourth to be built within a span of five years. The villages are not going to give up or stop building because we all know that this bridge benefits everyone in the three villages. It took these resilient villages only four days to complete the construction of the footbridge. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. Coming up in world news, thousands flee as fires continue in Greece. And later in sports, 2020 Olympic Games comes to a close. Businesses held virtual discussions with authorities to address potential issues and challenges in achieving COVID-safe business environment. This was done with the Ministry of Commerce and Trade, the Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission, and the Suva Retailers Association. Minister for Commerce and Trade Fairs Koya says the discussions covered key points such as COVID-safe protocols, mass vaccination, and the 2021-2022 National Budget Initiatives. Koya highlighted the initiative in deploying COVID-safe ambassadors and emphasized that the role of the COVID-safe ambassadors is to closely observe and advise businesses on the mandatory minimum parameters for safely operating businesses. Super Retailers Association President Jitesh Patel says instead of being given fines on the spot, business owners are now being educated more on operating with COVID-safe protocols. The uh, ambassadors uh, that are going around town and checking our shops uh, is quite high and we are happy with that. And also we'd like to thank Fiji FCCC for being in, uh, not uh, lenient but uh, coming forward and helping the businesses to get to the protocol levels that they want to. They are not just coming out and giving fines but helping the businesses and telling them what needs to be done. Here the local exchange rates are set early this morning. As usual, when it slips against the greenback, the Sangamoli rose against the currencies of our two major trading partners, the Aussie and Kiwi dollars, as well as the Euro and the Japanese Yen, but lost ground against the other international currencies we cover. Declines across the commodities market, crude oil dropped to close at $66 a barrel, gold dropped a few dollars to $1,736 per ounce, and silver closed down at $2,386 per ounce. And we now join Sharon from HFC Bank to give us the latest from the money markets. Good evening. A quick look at trading on our local South Pacific Stock Exchange. A total of 5,300 shares valued just over $20,000 were traded in 15 transactions last week. Following this, the market value fell marginally by 0.01% and concluded the week at $3.28 billion. In currencies, the U.S. dollar held near four-month highs after an upbeat U.S. jobs report lifted bond yields. Yields on U.S. 10-year notes were up at 1.3 percent. Investors were still assessing where the Friday strong U.S. payrolls report would take the Federal Reserve a step closer to winding back its stimulus. July consumer price index due this week are also expected to confirm that inflation has peaked in the U.S. There are four Fed officials speaking this week and will no doubt offer their own take on tapering. On the commodities, oil prices eased further after suffering their largest weekly drop in four months. This was on concerns that the spread of the Delta variant would temper travel demand. Gold prices also took a sudden dive, dropping as much as 2.2%. And that's all from your HFC Bank for now. Vinaka. Australia's Frankston City Council will form friendship city relationship with Fiji's largest municipal council, the Suva City Council. Local Government Minister Pramila Kumar says this partnership will promote communication and understanding in the areas of cultural, educational and economic relationships. Kumar says municipal councils in Fiji are moving towards digitization and are working to develop more facilities. She adds this relationship will assist the municipal council in understanding how things are done in Australia and aid us by exchanging ideas. Uh, most municipal councils in Fiji, they are moving towards digitization. They, they are trying to establish more sports facilities and uh, at the same time more recreational activities for 
its rate payers, for its tourists who visit the towns and cities, and basically for its people. Coming up after the break, entertainers explore dancing to keep fit during this pandemic. Stay with us. Welcome back. From cardboard beds to absent fans, here's how the Tokyo Olympic Games is meeting its goal of being a beyond carbon neutrality event. It's been hailed a success. Despite the entertainment industry facing a major setback due to the second wave of the coronavirus, artists have been keeping the spirit alive. 21-year-old Anudaksha Chandra has been using dance to keep fit while staying at home. Jeshulal reports. Passion overcomes all odds and for this second year university of the South Pacific student, her love for dancing is being utilized to practice fitness. Because of the pandemic, we are not able to go for dance rehearsals. So every day I take out time, um, whether it be one hour, half an hour or even 15 minutes. And I practice my routines. And they say practice makes you perfect. Paving her way to become a professional dancer was not easy for Chandra. However, her mother has been the driving force in helping her achieve her dreams. Just in dancing was always there in me. So maybe because my mom was a dancer and because it runs in the family. So I always had an interest to learn dance and it started when I was young. Chandra says she received a lot of criticism from society for being a dancer, but this did not deter her from following her dreams. The biggest challenge as a dancer that you can face in a country like Fiji is not being accepted in the society as a dancer um, because people here do not regard it as a job or as a passion but instead as a extracurricular activity which is not so important but dance is my passion so it is important to me uh, however my family has been very supportive chandra while pursuing her studies aims to become one of the best dancers in the country jeshulal fbc news and it's been a while but jamie is back with sports Okay, and good evening ahead in sports. Coaching a possibility for Tuai. And Bati inspired by PG7. This and more coming up. PG7's captain and two-time Olympic gold medalist Jerry Tuwai is looking at coaching in a few years. And while the seven-star is in demand from overseas clubs, he says he wants to take things one step at a time. Venina Rakautonga reports. A man who dedicated seven years of his life donning the national jumper still dreams of giving back to his country. I invest a lot of my time and everything to Fiji. I love Fiji a lot. And... And I'm willing to, I'm planning to do a lot uh, for Fiji rugby in the future. The 32-year-old, having received a handful of professional rugby contracts after the 2016 Olympic Games, says he will have to weigh out his options before looking at the next step. There will always be uh, contracts and offers coming from overseas, but, you know, uh, for me uh, personally, you know, I, I don't know, you know. Uh, no, I love playing sevens, uh, sevens rugby, I love Fiji, you know, uh, but I do not know, you know, we have a lot of plans in our heart, but only God's, uh, God's plan prevails. Fellow teammate Asaeli Tuivwaka says he wants to continue playing more games for the national side. I want to continue playing for this country, and if it's God's plan for me to do that, then I will. I'm always ready to take on any challenge. Tuai and the Fiji 7 team are currently in quarantine with only a few days before they will reunite with their families. Veninara Kautanga, FPC Sports. The postponed World Cup will be a good rebuilding opportunity for the Fiji National Rugby League. 
Many top players would have been unavailable if the World Cup was going to be held as scheduled this year. However, the pandemic has also made the Mbati coaching staff realize how valuable its local resources are. Akula Dama has more. These latest achievements by the Fiji Sevens and Fijiana sides have taught our Mbati coaching team an important lesson. On the side of the paddock, the Fiji Rugby Union boys has proven uh, with their coaching staff. And the only person that comes in here is um, the, the head coach. And that, that the physio, the trainer, the SNC coach is, uh, is a local. Wesley says Fiji has proven that we don't only have quality local players, but there's some very qualified homegrown coaches as well. The curtain has fallen on the 2020 Olympics with the Olympic flame being doused in Tokyo, bringing the two-week-long event to an official end. The Olympic flag has now been handed to Paris, who will host the Games in 2024. The Fiji Football Association is anticipating an October start date if the majority of its players are vaccinated and clearances given by the Ministry of Health. Most players are due for the second jab with hopes of passing the 85% threshold by month's end. Talima Terukula has more. Vaccination is a huge factor in getting the ball rolling again. By end of August, we should have 85% uh, plus uh, vaccination for double dose, which means that uh, we will be ready to start our programs uh, in a safe manner, uh, provided we will be applying to the ministry for a special permission to hold our games closed doors and all that. If clearance is given, the association has placed its priority on the resumption of the national leagues. It's just the, just the Women's Senior League, the Women's Super League and the uh, Digital Premier League and Digital Senior League. That's the four main competitions that we are targeting now. But football, amongst others, is on track with the plans in place. majority got their second job uh, on uh, Saturday last week. And uh, there's just a handful left and uh, their dates are uh, later this month. So we're hoping to get the full team uh, vaccinated apart from uh, two to three players who have uh, decided that they don't want the jab at all. The association will draw up all relevant data required, including vaccination and COVID safe protocols, which will be submitted to MCTTT and the Ministry of Health for possible clearance. Tali Terakula, FBC Sports. Lionel Messi wept as he bade farewell to his boyhood team, FC Barcelona. Auckland and Canterbury put on a great show once again, this time in the opening round of the NPC in New Zealand yesterday. The traditional rivals are showing a lot of flair and grit at the start of the season. Now to play of the day, and could this be the greatest non try in Bledisloe Cup history? This piece of magic happened in the match between the All Blacks and Wallabies on Saturday night, but was later denied after the TMO ruled a forward pass. In our quirky sport of the day, cheerleading. What started out as a group of people, uh, people cheering for their sports teams in unison and in acrobatic fashion has in itself become a sport. While some might snark at the idea of it being labeled a sport, it actually is one of the most dangerous around. That's it from Sports Tonight, but coming up in Weird and Wonderful, meet the dog that was elected mayor of a little town in the United States. Listen more after the break. Fine weather prevailed over most country. Cloudy periods with brief showers over the interior of the main islands. Now to the west, mostly sunny, becoming cloudy in the late afternoon. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, a mixture of sun and clouds. In the north, it was pleasantly sunny. The places we are checking out today are Mba, Nandi and Suva. Suva had the highest humidity at 60%. At sea, expect southeasterly winds, 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, the next low tide is at 1.21 tomorrow morning with high tide at 7.29 a.m. Sunrise is at 6.29.
For tomorrow, partly cloudy with brief showers over Lao and Lomai Viti Group, Kandavu and southern parts of Viti Levu elsewhere mainly fine. The outlook for Wednesday, partly cloudy conditions with a brief shower over the eastern parts of the larger islands, mainly fine elsewhere. Cool nights can be expected. And to our shot of the day, this picture comes all the way from Rakiraki, sent in by Reshmi Mukesh. And in Fijian Pulse, we ask, are you happy with the reward being given to the Sevens team? I am happy with the reward to be given to our Sevens gladiators. It is deserving of the joy they brought us. I am happy with the reward. They did us proud and it's only right we pay them back for their sacrifices. The reward is indeed well deserved by our Sevens players. They worked hard and they have put us on the world map. I am stoked and I believe they deserve the reward. For me, they really deserve it. Would you believe a dog's won a mayoral race? Murphy, the dog mayor of Fairhaven, Vermont, in the U.S., went into office, raised money for a playground and a dog park, and set up a reading program. The local politician is a small cavalier King Charles Spaniel pup who brings his mom along and helps unify his politically divided town. And recapping our main stories, authorities don't expect any variants of COVID-19 to emerge. ADB believes Fiji's recovery dependent on vaccination and fire leaves 10 people homeless. For these stories and others, tune in to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, last week we asked, should there be an Olympic 7 celebration once Fiji is clear of COVID-19? 54% answered yes. This week we are asking, should more be done for women's rugby in Fiji? Visit our FPC News website to take part. And remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos, email fpcnews at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts. You can also download our FPC app to keep updated with the very latest in news and sports and listen to our six radio stations live. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Mother Mandala.